Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, I would like to talk about um, dependency uh, between uh, random variables and independency as well. Um, as part of this uh, uh, course of advanced mathematics for teenagers and high school students, the course is presented on unizor.com. I suggest you to watch from that website because every lecture has comments and the functionality of uh, the website actually can inspire you to um, get a little bit deeper into studying of mathematics which, because it includes um, um, certain exams which you can take um, under supervision of your uh, parents or, or teachers you can enroll in, in some courses and basically see the progress and the site is free by the way alright so we'll talk about correlation between random variables so the word correlation actually means well they are dependent in some way now the purpose of this lecture is to establish some numerical characteristic of this dependency now let me just start from presenting the problem so we have two random variables now to establish these two random variables let me start from the very uh, foundations of uh, random variables we have some probability space which contains elementary events E1 etc EM with corresponding probabilities uh, P1 etc PM that's one um, probability space and then there is another probability space with elementary events F1 etc FN and the corresponding probabilities Q1 etc QM all right so that's what we have we have one elementary set of elementary events and their probabilities and we have another one with other elementary events and their probabilities and on these two um, probability spaces we have defined two different random variables now random variable C uh, on um, elementary events E1 etc EM takes corresponding values let's say XI and when random variable eta um, of uh, FJ has value of YJ so we can say that the probability um, the probability of C to take value xi equals to P1, P, P I, and the probability of uh, eta to take yj is equal to qj. So these two random variables. Okay, now first of all, let's think about their independence. What does it mean that they are independent of each other? Well, if they are independent, it means that basically the conditional probability of one of them to take some value I usually use I with X in case uh, another is equal to something so conditional probability of C to take the value of X I under condition that eta have has already taken the value of yj it's supposed to be equal to unconditional probability now if this is true for any elementary events for any values uh, of C and, and, and eta then we are talking about independent variables C and eta now obviously this definition is not symmetrical because this means that C is independent of eta now, the um, uh, independent variable has certain properties as far as this is concerned. We have already discussed them. I'll just very quickly um, uh, mention them. So the first one is the symmetry, which means if C is independent of eta, eta is independent of C. And I have proven this in corresponding lecture of this course. So that means that probability of eta to take yj under condition of C 
took value of xi is equal to unconditional probability of eta to take yj. Now, the second property which I would like to mention is the product of um, uh, probabilities. So, the probability of combined event, C has taken the value xi and eta has taken the value yj. So, this combined probability is equal to the product of probabilities. Probability of the combined events is equal to product of liabilities. Probabilities. So this is true for independent events. We have already discussed it when we were talking about independence. And um, the third one, which I have recently added to the course, that was the lecture which um, I had before. The mathematical expectation of product of these two random variables independent variables is equal to a product of their mathematical expectations. So just remember these three properties. Symmetry, if C is independent of eta, it is independent of C. Now this is the uh, theorem which um, I have proven about the probability of the combined event, which includes two different um, ra random variables, independent variables, which took certain values, it's equal to the product of probabilities, and the multiplication of the um, mathematical expectation. So these are independent random variables. Now, but I was talking about what if it's not independent? How can we measure the dependency between these two variables if this is not true? Well. The whole lecture is about introducing this measure. It's a number, basically. Now, um, I will introduce it into space, for, uh, in, in two steps. First, I will talk about covariance and then about correlation. Basically, my purpose is to establish certain uh, numerical characteristic, which ultimately, let's say when I'm talking about correlation, ultimately will be equal to zero for independent variables it will be equal to 1 for very rigidly dependent random variables. What is rigidly dependent? Well, for instance, eta is equal to a times c, where a is some constant, not 0. Now, this is a very, very rigid dependency, which means that the value of c determines the value of eta with probability 1, which means definitely. All right? So, for these type of cases, I would like to have the, um, uh, my numerical measure of dependency to be maximum. In this case, the maximum I have chosen in such a way that it will be equal to 1 or minus 1. 1 for positive A and minus 1 for negative A. Well, why is it necessary? Well, obviously, because if C is I increasing and A is negative, then eta is decreasing. That's why it's more convenient to have this coefficient um, to be negative. And for all other dependencies, I mean, there are some partial dependencies, it should be in between minus 1 and 1. So that's my purpose, that's my goal. So let's see how I can accomplish it. So the first thing is I will introduce a concept of covariance. Between two variables, two random variables. Now, it's just a definition. And let me just uh, basically just express it the way how I consider it's important. So, first of all, I would like to centralize my variables and then I will take their product and then I will take the mathematical expectation of this product so I claim that this is a good measure 
not my final measure, but it's a good measure to basically reflect whether there is a dependency or there is none between two different random variables, C and eta. And here is why. Well, first of all, I think it makes sense to open the parentheses and you will see that it can be simplified a little bit. So let's open the parentheses. So I will have C times eta minus C times expectation of eta, which is a constant, by the way, right? Minus eta times uh, expectation of C and plus E odd C times E odd eta equals. Well, mathematical expectation of sum of random variables is always sum of their mathematical expectations. That's E times uh, C times eta. Now minus, now my, my uh, expectation of random variable times constant, you can get the constant outside of the expectation, right? You remember this. So it's minus eta my expectation of xi. Now here, the constant is this, expectation of xi, and mathematical expectation of eta. So it will be and plus this. And as you see, this cancels out, and I have a simpler formula for covariance. Okay? Now you see that for independent C and eta, this is equal to zero, because if you remember, I just mentioned it, independ for independent variables, mathematical expectation of their product is equal to the product of mathematical expectation. So for independent variables, that's exactly zero, which is good. Now, let's consider Let's consider dependent variables. So let's again, my definition of covariance is, I will put this simpler expression. Okay, now let's consider that eta is equal to a times c. What will be covariance in this particular case. Okay. Okay. Xi times eta would be a xi square, right? Now a can be taken out, so it would be a minus E odd C times A E odd C. What is this? It's A times E odd C square minus E odd C square. Now what is this? mathematical expectation of the variable square minus square root mathematical expectation. That's a variance. So as we see, my covariance would be equal to this multiplier A times variance of, of C. Now this is a constant and now we see that if A is positive my covariance will be positive, because variance is always positive, right? If A is negative, my covariance will be negative. And this coefficient basically is a measure of how fast one is changing with changing of the value of another. And um, 
one more example which is basically part of this what is the covariance of variable with itself well in this case a is equal to 1 so this is equal to variance of C and finally I would like to a little bit I, I would like to consider a little bit more complicated case I call it half dependency now here is what half dependency actually uh, I mean it's not a, a, an official term uh, which people use in the books or textbooks I just invented it right now what is half dependency let's consider you have two different random variables which are identically distributed on the same space probability space and they are independent of each other I would like to know the covariance between C and average of C with other variable which is exactly um, identically distributed as C but independent of C well let's just do it I mean it's a simple thing um, so it's mathematical expectation of their product right so it's a uh, C square divided by 2 plus C C prime divided by 2 minus product of their expectations uh, now what's the expectation of this well expectation of sum is equal to sum of expectation right they are identically distributed which means that the expectation of C prime is equal to expectation of C so it will be the expectation of C, of C, of C divided by 2 so it's expectation of C equals now this is also sum so it would be one half expectation of C square plus now these guys C and C prime are independent I said it in the very beginning which means that the uh, expectation of uh, their product is equal to product of their expectation so it's one half expectation of C times expectation of C prime which is exactly the same so I put square here and minus again E squared equals to one half e of c square minus e square of c which is one half of variance c so if you remember the previous case when i was uh, talking about covariance of c and c i had that it's equal to variance of c now in this case when I'm trying to um, establish the dependency between C and this half sum of C plus uh, another variable which is, in, which is independent of C and identically distributed I have half so what does it mean? Well, it means that covariance seems to be a well-defined measure of my dependency between variables because in this case these two variables they are identically identical which means they are extremely rigidly connected to each other now this it's not exactly because half of this new variable is still rigidly dependent of C and another half is completely independent so it's half dependency that's exactly why I use that term and as we see our covariance have been reduced by half because of that so these are examples of how covariance represents the dependency but, but this is not all I want it actually you see it depends on uh, variance I would like actually a measure of dependency which is kind of just number without any other relationship with um, characteristics of the variable and this is called correlation that's the new 
uh, definition which I'm going to introduce. The correlation between two variables is their covariance divided by square root of product of their variations, vari variances. Now, why is this better? Well, because covariance actually, as you see, dependent on, on the variance of components. Now, if I will divide it by this, you will see that it's always between minus 1 and 1, with 1 being the most dependent and minus 1 being most dependent in a negative sense, and 0 means independent. So let's just think about it. Again, let's go through all my three examples. First example is independent. If C and eta are independent, as we know, their covariance is equal to zero, which means R is equal to, correlation is equal to zero. Second, let's just uh, um, check a very simple and very strict rigid dependency. Strict rigid. Eta is equal to xi. What happens in this case? Well, as we saw, covariance of xi and xi is equal to variance, right? Divided by square root of variance of xi times variance of xi. So this is variance and this is variance square and arithmetic root from variance square is a variance, so it's one. Now, the third case. Eta is equal to a xi. What happens in this case? Well, we saw the covariance is equal to Covariance is equal to A times variance of C. Now, in this case, I have square root of C times square root of eta, right? In this case. Now, if eta is equal to A C, I will have square root of A square and variance square of xi, right? Which is equal to what? Well, ver square root of variance is variance, it's positive, so we can reduce it, we can cancel it out, and I will have a divided by square root of a square, which is absolute value of a. So, if a is positive, I have one, if a is negative, I have minus 1, exactly, how I, exactly the way how I wanted it to be. So, if this rigid dependency is with a positive uh, coefficient a, then the correlation is 1. If a is negative, correlation is minus 1. And the last example, just to show you how uh, sensitive this correlation coefficient is, Let's consider half-dependent variables. So we don't forget it. Okay, the third case is I have correlation between xi and xi plus xi prime divided by 2, where xi prime is identically distributed as xi and independent of it. Well, again, you remember that covariance is equal to one half of variance of xi. Now, in the denominator, I have the following. I have a square root of variance of xi times. Now, variance of eta, which is variance of this thing, 
Now, one half is uh, going out from the variance as one quarter, right, in square. Now, variance of a sum of two independent variables is sum of their variances. We know that property of the independent variables, right? So it will be, but their variances are the same because they are identically distributed. So I will have two variance of C. Am I right? Variance of C, then one quarter times two. Um, so what 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 do I have? I'm missing something. If this is one half, I will have the result greater than one, which is wrong. Hmm. Let's say again, the covariance is equal to multiplication covariance between C and C plus C prime is equal, equal to of C square divided by 2. I think that's where I made a mistake. I think this um, plus C, C prime divided by 2, right? That's my minus expectation of C times expectation of C plus C prime divided by 2. So their product is this, which is 1 half, and this is the same, so it's E of C square plus E of C square. That's what it is, right? Minus E of C square, this times this divided by 2, and minus E of C uh, also square divided by 2, because E of C and E of C prime are exactly the same, right? So what happens? one half of e square plus one half minus and minus one half and minus one half e of c square which is one half of variance no i was right here so where i'm wrong Where am I wrong? Now I have variance of one is this, and variance of this is this. So, hmm. It should be less than one, and now I have one half divided by. square root of one half. Or maybe this is correct, wait a moment. So variance will cancel out. So I have one over two. This is one half square root of two. Well, maybe that's right actually. This is one half, so 
So that's why it goes to the top. Okay. In my notes, I put one half for whatever reason. Pro probably I have to revise it. Um, so this looks like the uh, correlation coefficient between half-dependent variables. Uh, okay. So again, it's obviously less than one, and uh, it's not exactly one half although I was considering that probably if I have this half dependency maybe I should have half of the uh, of half of one um, apparently it's not but in any case I just wanted to illustrate that you have some reasonable number um, which basically corresponds to degree of dependency and this correlation coefficient is exactly what is being used for this purpose if you would like to know whether two random variables which you know their distribution etc etc uh, are correlated or not well or dependent or not you calculate the uh, correlation uh, between them coefficient of correlation and if it's zero then it's a good indication that they are um, independent now it does not mean that if it's zero, then it's independent. No, it means only that it's probably independent. Because it's only if it's independent, then the correlation is zero. There is no reverse theorem in this particular case. So, if it's independent, the correlation is zero. So, if you've got the correlation zero, it means that uh, the independence is kind of suspected. But it's not necessarily true because by some sheer accident the probabilities can be distributed in such a way that calculation of this thing gives you zero basically that's it for today um, most importantly this particular property of correlation coefficient is used in statistics obviously uh, because in statistics you don't know the probability distribution so you cannot actually exactly calculate covariance or variance etc you can only evaluate it based on statistical data and there in this particular case the correlation coefficient which is closer to one for instance or significantly different from zero is a definite indication that there is a dependency between um, random variables which you are um, examining using statistical methods but this would be in a completely different lecture. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you very much and good luck.